Welcome back to another episode of How to Fix Your Forklift. Today we're at a pallet plant in Dover, New Jersey, and um, Mike said he had a problem with his forklift. He had a code 24, uh, which is a traction problem, and we're going to go figure that one out now. Here we're at the forklift with the uh, forward travel problem. It's a four-wheel counterbalance electric lift. Um, if you look into troubleshooting of this, this manual of this certain make, uh, there's several things that it could to be the possibility, but we're going to focus on uh, the major ones. Probably 90% of the time, um, your problem is your contactor tips or your contactor. So we're going to go check that out now. Here we are at the back of the truck uh, with the access panel removed. Um, always remove the battery before doing any work in this panel. Um, first thing you want to do is a visual inspection. If you're looking for any burn marks on your cables, uh, any loose bolts will, will weld. Um, I don't know who did the work prior to it, but that would be the cause. Um, you're looking for any damage at the tips, uh, anything caught in there that might be contaminants. I like to hit the plungers, you know, maybe get lucky something will fall out. Uh, I can tell already this one is uh, kind of discolored, so we're going to remove this whole contactor out. Simple tools I'm using is a half inch drive or a 13 and a flat tip screwdriver. Just go ahead and uh, take off all your fasteners. If you want to, you can label everything. Um, I like to have a paint marker. Sometimes I label things. Don't drop anything into the panel. This forklift's only got a, a single contactor, it's only a single drive motor. Uh, your model might have two, a dual drive, so you'll have two of these contactors you'll have to disassemble uh, and inspect the tips. Be careful on the collar here, it might drop down. Just grab with your finger when you're pulling everything apart. This one's famous for falling in here. You can label all your links. Grab your contactor so it doesn't pop out on you. Don't fall to pieces, so just catch it when it comes out. And your last screw. Here's your contactor removed from your unit. Um, we're just going to take this apart, uh, do any means that you can to try to to remember where everything goes. I just I like to stack everything the way I take it off. I can see already these tips here, they're burnt out. Uh, it could have been our problem. We've got our new tip kit out here already. I'm just going to replace every piece that I take out. 
Watch the pieces that are threaded. Wipe down all your contaminants. Inspect your plunger pin. Uh, if this pin breaks, you're going to need to replace the whole assembly or just a plunger if you have it. Check your isolators, they may be burned here real bad. Um, all, these, all these signs are an entire contact or replacement. These seem to be fine though. We're just going to replace the tips. These are your uh, movable contact tips. Uh, just be sure that they're facing towards your other tips you're going to replace. For this part, if you have to, you can make yourself some kind of jig to hold everything together, but you guys with little girly hands will probably need this jig. <laughs> I can just hold it together. Let's put everything back together the way it came apart. your assembled contactor. Uh, always double check the tips, make sure the contacts are touching each contact. Um, there's your finished assembly. Here we are installing the contactor assembly. Uh, you might have to shake it around to seat the plungers. Secure all the screws, but you don't, you don't have to really make them tight. Uh, you need some you need some space to get those those tubes in, those collars. So just just set it in. Some of these may not line up. Uh, just shake them around. Try to guide them in. This one's being fairly nice. To line up your link. Uh, this is movable, it does go up and down, just for the height of your other contactor. Be sure to assemble everything the way you took it off. The collar here is a little tricky, but smaller hands would help.
Like I said, don't tighten them up too much. <laughs> You'll need some space. Now you've got your two collars in, you can go ahead and secure all the screws. You don't have to over tighten them, just snug them up. I get a habit of uh, checking the plungers again. Just make sure everything moves. I don't want to have to take this apart again. You can tighten some of the bolts up. Tighten them up as you go. Try to remember which ones you do. You don't want to forget one. Sure to double back, make sure everything's tight. You leave a bolt loose or a cable loose, uh, you'll be running the truck and um, the cables are weld, uh, the bolts are weld, so don't leave anything loose. Job rating of one to five forks, five being the hardest. I'm going to rate this as a two fork job. Uh, remember, if your forklift's not fixed, you're not making money. Uh, thanks for joining us on how to fix your forklift. Till next time.